Yesterday I, I heard um, that there on a certain college campus and in some, some other places that now uh, people are zeroing in on Thanksgiving Day as a racist celebration. And, uh, and because of all of the associations that we have, that how it's, a, it's actually remembering, again, a European invasion of this country and, and all the things that go with that. And I don't want to belabor that point. But it's, it's, it struck me as, I said, oh, you gotta be kidding. But uh, it, it's, it's consistent with how so many things that we just take for granted that we uh, believe are part of our identity uh, as uh, citizens of this country, uh, how those things are, can be questioned, and how certain people just, you know, now they won't celebrate Thanksgiving Day for that very reason. And, you know, we can go back into history and we can look at all the events and we can look at motivations and all of that, and we can come down on the side of, of uh, attacking what had originally happened, or we can come down on the side that we traditionally would come down on. We can come down somewhere in between. But regardless of where we, we land on these on this particular day's issues and historical precedents and antecedents, etc. The most important thing about this day is that this is perhaps the most particularly American feast that we have because of its deep roots. The motivation that brought the first settlers from England here to these shores uh, was one of needing to get away from where they were dying in basic poverty. Some of them that were dying in, in Holland where they were given refuge but they really never were able to uh, make a life for themselves as well as those who left England in the hopes of you know, having a better life. They didn't exactly land where they had intended to land, but they ended up in a place where they believed that God had led them to. And that's one of those things about, about Thanksgiving Day that's particularly an American thing because of the involvement of God and the involvement of providence in those early years of what eventually becomes the United States. Because the pilgrims and the others really, truly believed that God had directed them to exactly where they landed. According to some of the other stuff in rebuttal of that uh, issue, uh, that I heard yesterday was that the <coughs> natives who met them, Squanto being one of them, uh, and Massasoit the other, I believe, um, <coughs> both of them had at one time been captured by the Spaniards when they originally came and were in the southern part of the United States. Um, they took these men back to Spain. Eventually they managed to escape and get to England. And so you imagine the surprise of the settlers, you know, the pilgrims, when this <clears throat> native person comes walking towards them and speaks to them in their own language. Because he had learned English. And that's not a myth, that's a documented part of the story. So I'm sure that after four or five of them fainted at that very idea, you know, that 
they had to give thanks to God that they even had somebody there in this vast open space that had nothing but promise, you know, spread out all over it, was able to speak to them and communicate and, and then be able to take message back to the other native population of who these people were, why they were there. That they weren't there like the previous people to, to conquer them. They came to have an opportunity and a better life. And they had, were actually able to work those things out so that no one felt that they were being cheated out of, out of anything. And you have to stop and think that how could they not have believed that God led them here with that experience of, of Squanto and Massasoit and the others that they encountered and that they actually were able to be taught by them and be able to eventually to sit down with these people and eat together. And I'm sure eventually they evangelized them. Not because they thought that they were horrible people, but because they wanted to share with them the good news of Jesus Christ because of their firmly held belief that, you know, if you are baptized and believed, you'll be saved. And if you're not, you're condemned. And so they wanted to share their faith with them. And even though, you know, the pilgrims in the course of time, because of their their very strict interpretation of, of Christianity um, became intolerant later on of other people who didn't quite believe as intensely as they did, or who if they were, you know, Catholic, uh, who came later, uh, they were not tolerated. Uh, but whatever their faults were, the beginnings of our culture in this country have deeply religious roots, which is why the Episcopal Church and some of the other churches have proper readings, prayers for this day because it is so important for us to give thanks to God for everything that we've been given, for everything that we have become, and to ask forgiveness for those ways where we've maybe at times gone off in the wrong direction, done things that were not pleasing to God, done things that were wrong, things that at least are questionable. Whether in the past or in the present, we are God's people. This country has been blessed in certain ways. It doesn't mean that we are better than everybody else in the face of the earth, but we are different and that's why when people study this country and study this culture, even with all of the different uh, ethnic groups and races that have come together and religions over the course of you know, almost three centuries more, if you take the old, older history, um, this is something unique in the world and continues to be. And it makes us really have a relationship with <clears throat> the ancient Israel. The reading from Joel today <clears throat> is in the context of going through one of their frequent <clears throat> locust invasions and how the people reacted to this swarm of locusts coming in and destroying their harvest and how they at different times interpreted that as God's chastisement, God's punishment on them because of their unfaithfulness. And the prophet Joel, you know, in those very few chapters of, of his prophecy, makes it clear like today that yes indeed this is it has, was a discipline from God, but God is also restoring to his people all that they have lost, that the land will repay them for 
this. And the fact that the land repays them, the fact that they can grow their crops, the fact that they can have grain and wine and oil um, that's reflected also in the psalm today, is because God wants his people to have what they really need to live. That it's not, a, just like we heard in the gospel, it's not a matter of us trying to amass a fortune or to have so many things around us, clothes, uh, food, whatever, that we can close ourselves off from everybody else and say, well, I got everything I need and that's all that matters to me. It's an invitation to us to remember that what we have been given by God is truly a gift <clears throat> that we are meant to share, that we are meant to be grateful for, that we are meant to use in the proper way so that not only we have the clothes that we need and the food that we need and the shelter that we need, but so that others, indeed all, the goal is that everybody would be able to have that kind of a dignified life because of the graciousness of God and the open-handedness of the people that have received so much. You know, whatever we eat today, as ample as the food is almost in, on every table of any family or any gathering for Thanksgiving Day, and you know all kinds of different things that will that will try or that we will you know consume in quantity. Um, all of those things should remind us that there is ultimately a giver who makes that possible. <clears throat> the one who provides it initially, the one who gave it, the one who led those pilgrims to encounter a land that they could certainly develop and that would be able to feed them, provide for them, give them what they needed, and then make them aware that now they had a responsibility to give to others who had less. And when you listen to some of those stories, even if you cut through some of the embellishments, the bottom line is they understood that what God gave to them, they were meant to share. And they weren't meant to, to hog everything. They were meant to share it so that everybody could know God's blessing because it was through those real means of everyday life that people came to understand the providence of God. It's like... We here this morning, we're giving worship and praise and thanks to God for our country, for our families, for the blessings of this nation, for the food and, and everything else that we have and have in abundance and so accessible to us. Even in the midst of whatever difficulties or problems we have. And at the same time, we're being asked to remember that we have a responsibility to take care of those in need, to feed the hungry, to clothe the naked, to give shelter to the homeless, to give love and understanding <coughs> and compassion and mercy. Because it's in giving those things that people really come to know who God is. Because our religion is a religion of incarnation. It's a religion where God has taken on our human nature and God works through us to touch the lives of others. Christ became one of us, as we heard in that second lesson today so that we could understand what God wants for you and for me, how God wants us to live. 
and how by our union with Jesus that we are to be transformed more and more into his image, into his likeness. So we say thanks to God today for everything that we have, for all that we are. And we ask the Lord to give us the same kind of generosity that would be pleasing to him when it comes to encountering other people who are in need. And that he would give us the wisdom to know what it is that they need the most and be willing to give what we can, whether it's something physical or something spiritual or something as simple as just listening to somebody or talking to someone. <coughs> Those are the ways that we will ultimately give thanks to God who has given us this day, this place, this life as pure gift as he gives himself to us also today once again in Holy Communion. 